Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, back with part three of my review of the Red 4 Pre. This time we're going to look at the Red 4 Pre as a Dante interface. Uh, we've got the track that we've been working on, drums, bass and guitar. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my mixing tricks, if that's a real phrase. Um, but most of all, what I want to do in this particular video is show you how I've set the Red 4 Pre and its appropriate control panels and software control interfaces. Yes, there's more than one. Um, I'm going to show you how I've set it up so I can use the Red 4 Pre Dante only. So the only connections I've made between the Mac and the Red 4 Pre, and in this case, the MPAR, which I still have attached, are all network Cat5, Cat5e connections. So from the network port on the Mac straight into the back of the network port on the Red 4 Pre. And then there are two network ports on the Red 4 Pre. One is coming from the Mac and the other one is going off to the MPAR. So believe it or not, there are actually four different software platforms we need to deal with when using the Red 4 Pre in Dante mode. And the first one is actually not on the Mac Pro, it's on the Mac Book Pro. So let's dive over there first. So here we are in the Focusrite control panel and I can already hear you screaming, why are you running two different computers when you're only having them connected to one interface? Well, there's a very simple solution to this. You can only get to Focusrite control via the Thunderbolt connection on the back of the Red 4 Pre. Now, my Mac Pro is a cheese grater style and doesn't have said Thunderbolt port, so I've had to connect it to my MacBook Pro. Now, the cool thing about this particular panel is as soon as I disconnect um, the Thunderbolt connection, it remembers all the settings. So you can see here, I've got the Red 4 Pre connected and I'm in the device settings option. So I can get in and mess with the four preamps. I can change the gain if I want to, line, instrument or mic settings, the air tweak on the mic pre's, phantom power, phase, high pass and stereo link. All very handy things. I can also change the sample rate. I'm not going to mess with that because of course it's going to mess with the session. Where my clock source is coming from, my SPDIF type, which type of monitoring I'm looking at, and how I'm connected at the moment, I'm using the Thunderbolt host. Now where things get interesting is when we flick over into mixing and routing. Now at the moment you can see I've hooked up my monitor source to be Dante 1 and 2 which is exactly what I want to happen. Of course, I can choose any of my DAW outputs. That's if I'm in Pro Tools mode or normal Thunderbolt mode, not using Dante only. I can have my custom mixes if I want to, or I can use a hardware input. In this case, I'm gonna use Dante. Now, of course, I can route my headphone mixes to those as well if I want to. Let's do that in this case and I can configure other line outputs as and when I need to or want to. But you can see here, Dante 1 and 2 is routing directly to analog 1 and 2 out, which is my monitor outputs. All hunky-dory. So we're now down here on the Mac Pro, and I want you to have a look at this screen, because it looks a bit confusing, but trust me, once you get your head around it, it's not too bad. So here we have the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Now I can stop that if I want to and I can change the configuration. At the moment I'm using 32 by 32. To be honest, uh, in non-HD mode, you're maxed out at 32 channels anyway of I.O. So you might as well leave it there. This is a paid for add-on piece of software. There is a kind of a free trial you can run for 14 days, but I think it's about 40 bucks. Not really worth worrying about too much in the grand scheme of things. Now, it has to be said, you're using a network configuration and there is tiny, weeny bit of latency. Of course, it says 10 milliseconds. I think that's pushing it a little bit, but hey, it's still pretty low. You can track with it quite happily. Now, the next one down is the RedNet control. Now, you can see here are three devices. Uh, top one is actually the Red 4 Pre, even though it doesn't show up as a Red 4 Pre. DVS, Dante Virtual Sound Card, well effectively that's that one. Um, and we still have the MPAR connected, so that's that one down here. So we can control the MPAR from our same machine as our Pro Tools, because of course all this stuff is happening across the network, which is very, very handy. Now, this is the one where things get interesting, Dante Controller. 
Now, Dante controller, like all of these kind of cross point network grid things, can be a bit of a nightmare. But in this case, it's very simple. All I've done is used Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, all my machines in here are named after Star Wars characters. Um, I'm using Obi Wan Kenobi to route everything across the outputs of the Red 4 Pre, which of course we know it's that because it's showing up as that weird code name here. Don't get too bogged down by that. It's just a cross point matrix. I could open it up if I want to. I'm not going to go too far down that road. But as long as you have in the focus right control panel connected via Thunderbolt, as long as you have it set as Dante 1 and 2, and you have Dante 1 and 2 rooted here, it will just work. Trust me, I'm a drummer. So diving over into Pro Tools, you can see it's a fairly simple mix, but it's a fairly simple track. Uh, and it's quite kind of jazz, funk style. I don't want to heavily process the drums. But what I have done is use the rather amazing Sound Radix Auto Align to line everything up, make sure it's all in phase and it's polarity correct and that sort of stuff. Now, I don't know if you saw a little while ago, I did a video comparing um, focus mics on the drums. And by that, I mean which one is being used for send. Now, I find that if I use the snare top mic as my send and everything else then lines up to that, for me, I get the best tone. I know there are plenty of other people out there who do it differently. I like the snare top mic as what I've called the focus mic. Um, other than that, drums have been pretty much left alone. The drum sound is pretty good through the pre's. Um, other than on the hi-hat, I'm using a bit of Slate Virtual Mix Rack Revival just to bring out some of the zing on the hi-hats, and I'm doing pretty much the same on the overheads. I really like this. It just does something for the top end, just makes it shine a little bit. Perhaps a bit too much on the big crashes, but hey, it's, it's a trade-off. I really like it. On the drum bus, again, I'm diving for virtual mix rack and I'm using the FG116. We know what it's supposed to be uh, in vintage mode. I think this thing sounds lovely. Not hitting it hard for this style of compressor, maybe sort of four or five dB of compression mainly for tone, but you can see here, I'm only using it about 75% wet. So I'm still getting a certain amount of that natural clean signal through, which we really like. Reverb on the drums is coming from the amazing R2 by Exponential Audio. Medium plate, quite wide. I absolutely adore this thing. Just gives great drum sound. And I'm probably using about the same on all the channels on the drums, except for the kick. Yes, I do put reverb on my kicks because in the real world, it's the kick sound that's going to excite a room the most. It's got the most energy, the most power. So, hey, I think a dry kick sound, certainly in this style of music, would just sound wrong. So there's a little bit going through there just to put the whole kit in a space. Bass guitar, soft tube bass amp room is a one-stop shop, one-hit wonder. I absolutely adore this thing, certainly in the sort of the clean fat mode, but I didn't tweak. I like a bit more amp sound to direct, pull the limiter back a little bit, sounds killer. The guitars, I'm really not treating that hard. A little bit of Summit TLA 100, again, just tapping it. Distorted guitars are quite compressed anyway by the nature of how, com how distortion works. I'm then using Exponential Audio Excalibur as my kind of delay. It's an amazing plugin that I really am only scratching the surface on, but I think the delay signal quality and the amount of control you get over those delays is worth using this plugin every single time, even if you're not doing crazy re looped back, reharmonized and LFO'd delays and stuff like that. This does the really simple stuff and the really complicated stuff excellently. On my master bus, I'm using a bit of Millennia uh, NSEQ2. I've even started with the left and right tube preset and tweaked a little bit, pulled some bass back, I think. Um, a 33609 compressor, again, just tapping it, just to give me the sound of the compressor rather than too much compression effect. And the Avid Pro limiter on the last thing because it's the most sonically clear limiter I've ever heard. Everyone on the team raves about this thing. It's absolutely adorable, if a limiter can be adorable. Um, and it's easy to use. Great. So let me play the track back for you and I'll run through the, the, the different effects and tweaks I'm doing so you can see and hear exactly what's going on.
So as I've already said in the other two videos, I utterly adore this thing to the point that actually now it is my main Pro Tools I.O. when I'm using my HD system or even it goes out on the road with me sometimes when I'm using it with my MacBook Pro in Thunderbolt mode. This thing is utterly brilliant, which of course is why I'm giving it editor's choice. This thing is just phenomenal. I genuinely think this is the best thing that Focusrite have ever made, and I think they would probably agree with me. The connectivity options are awesome. It's about as close as everything that you'd ever need in an audio interface. Great mic pre's, great connectivity for HDX or over Thunderbolt or over Dante. This thing is killer. Of course, as we know, the sound quality is second to none. It's very difficult to get that across in a video such as this on YouTube. But, you know, take my word for it. Or better still, find a dealer that's got one and go and try it. Go and have a listen to it. That's what dealers are for. And then, of course, they will work very hard to take your hard-earned shekels from you. If I had to have one really minor criticism, it's that to get to Focusrite control panel, I have to use the Thunderbolt connection. Now, I totally understand the reasons for that. It's just a bit of a niggle when you've got an older system running HDX and you've also got the newer system. I have to have it connected via Thunderbolt. So effectively, I'm using all types of connectivity all the time, which okay is kind of a good thing, but hey, it's a very small niggle because once it's set, it's kind of click and forget. Disconnect that side of things and away you go. So I hope you've enjoyed all three parts of this review. Um, sorry it's taken a little while to get to the last one, but truly this thing is worth checking out. So for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert and I'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.